Now, IBS, irritable bowel syndrome, is thought to affect between 5 and 20% of the population and is nearly twice as common in women than it is in men. So no surprise that uh, celebrities are affected uh, or as affected as any other walk of life by the condition. We are joined now by former Blue Peter presenter and dancing on iStar, Zoe Salmon, to tell us what it is like living with IBS and how it affects her and how she's got a handle on it as well. Zoe, you're very welcome to Ireland AM this morning. Thank you very much. It's lovely to be here. A pleasure to have you here. <laughs> let's, let's roll back into the mists of time because obviously Blue Peter was kind of where you first got your start in TV and it was really interesting for me to read it as a TV presenter how you ended up getting the role on Blue Peter. I it was quite know. innocent and innocuous so how did it all come about? Very much so well I was doing my nine to five job as a trainee solicitor and I was just coming up to qualifying as a solicitor when I came across this advertisement in the local newspaper and it's a TV presenter wanted and as any aspiring TV presenter knows you don't come across ads like that they just are very few and far between and I'd always had an interest in amateur dramatics. I'd grown up a bit of a thespian and I'd taken a year out of my law degree to do Miss Northern Ireland and I'd some TV experiences in that year and I thought, you know what, I'm going to apply for this. And so I did this show reel in my bedroom, which in hindsight was really, really mega amateur. And I thought, you know, who's going to take this seriously? And it turned out when I sent in the show reel and I applied for the job, they called me and it was for Blue Peter. So they didn't actually advertise on the TV presenter wanted ad that it was for Blue Peter. And I went back and forth to London for months of auditions and interviews. It was a really rigorous process, as you can imagine. And yeah, I ended up getting the job and saying goodbye to my law career, but I did qualify. So it's always there for me to go back to, which is great. <laughs> Wow, you know, law degree, yeah. Blue Peter presenter. I know, it's a very uh, juxtaposition. Were you surprised by when you found out it was Blue Peter? I mean, Blue Peter is possibly the most famous children's television programme, other than Sesame Street. Yes. Two yeah. most famous television children's television programmes in the world. And, you know, you're, you're out of school, you're into college, you're going on to be a lawyer, and you kind of think, well, yeah, I'm young and I want to have fun and all the rest of it, but that's possibly just a little too young. Well, I think for me, um, I'm just one of these people where I hate to turn down a challenge and an opportunity. And for me, it was a huge opportunity. And I think it was just good timing for me because I'd come to the point where I'd finished my five years of study. And, and I think you're right. It, I might have been a bit young had it have been midway through my law degree. And maybe I would have looked back and mm. regret thinking, oh, I never finished it. But it would, couldn't have worked out better timing wise mm. because I qualified and I thought, well, if I don't take this opportunity now, I could regret it. And I always thought I would go back to the law, but thankfully I've never had to. Well, I say not that I say thankfully in in, in a negative way, well, it worked but out. I just it worked yeah, out for yeah. me, and I love. I mean, I love you know this industry that we all work in. It's it's just fantastic and it's exciting. You mentioned there uh, you were crowned Miss Northern Ireland. Yes, and it was interesting. We did an item yesterday on beauty pageants oh, in Ireland, did. and there's going to be one uh, in Ireland, and people kind of have a very negative perception of beauty pageants. Do you think that's incorrect? You know, because we were say, saying how it's not a good idea to teach young girls to judge themselves purely on how they look. But would you agree with that or disagree with that? Yeah, I definitely think there is a very much divided camp when it comes to beauty pageants. Mm. And I think that for every person that says that it's very much like dated and sexist, there's someone that really promotes it. And all I can say is I, I had a really positive experience. Mm. I took a whole year out of my law degree to completely focus on my duties as um, a pageant holder as Miss Northern Ireland. And for me, it really was beauty with a purpose. And all the jobs that I did, you know, were very charity orientated. And I still am heavily involved in the charity work that I began doing back in 1999 when I when I did that year as Miss Northern with, Ireland. With all due respect, you're five foot ten, you're beautiful, you've got a perfect figure. Why <laughs> wouldn't you go in for a beauty patch? You know, I mean, you're never going to be judged harshly in that light, but... Well, it's funny because I think a lot of people say, oh, my mom entered me or my granny thinks that I'm really cute. But I entered myself because I actually thought it would be really good crack to hang out with a load of girls that were into hair and makeup and <laughs> wearing pretty dresses and, you know, any excuse to get dressed up. And I actually don't really think at the time I realised what a role it would be in winning because I never expected to win. But I can say that having won the title, there is a lot of responsibility that goes along with the title. And it isn't just what people people see it as at face value, just oh, wearing a bikini. And you know, there was a lot of government campaigns that I got involved in, a lot of after dinner speaking. You know, I wrote my own speeches, I delivered them. And just the range and the variety of jobs that you do is so diverse. It's a great training for what you do now. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it really is. I do think that, you know, the law, the beauty queen, the, the, the different jobs, if you like, that I've had um, so far in my life, you know, they actually really do yeah. go well with, with sitting in to be a TV presenter. 
centre. Now you're sitting here looking beautiful <laughs> and everything's wonderful and you got married not long ago. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. But you have got something that, you know, you do struggle with in your life, IBS. So yes. take us back to when that first reared its ugly head because it can be really challenging to deal with. Absolutely. It's extremely challenging. I first um, had my first IBS attack um, about, well, half a lifetime ago for me when I was in my teens, when I was about 17. And I just I didn't know what was happening. It's scary because all of a sudden, I was actually working, I'd just finished my shift in a local clothes shop um, and I was studying for my A-levels at the time. And I just remember doubling up in pain and just collapsing. And the store manager had to call my parents and ask them to come and collect me. And you just you panic because you just think hang on a minute I'm healthy I don't have any problems what mm. is this and you know you're so naive and you're young and you're a teenager and you think oh my goodness am I dying what's what's happening to my body these were unique symptoms that I'd never come across before and it was just extreme debilitating abdominal pain and then all the sort of boil symptoms that come along with IBS is maybe too early in the morning if people are having breakfast mm. to yeah. go into that but you you know yourself um it's you know an array of things from diarrhea, constipation, but for me, it, it was the doubling up and literally collapsing on the floor. So you didn't know you were um, having appendix. I blamed the restaurant. I said it must have been food poisoning, and I phoned the next day and I said I've been sick all night. Blah blah blah. And that's the thing with IBS; it is misdiagnosed. Like first of all, I was told I was intolerant to something. Then second of all, I thought that it was a food poisoning attack. And then the third time, I thought, oh, it was stress. You know, maybe I was just, you know, you just you you want to blame something, and you don't ever think that all these things add up and they equal IBS. And I'm convinced that there's so many people out there that have these symptoms maybe people watching at home now and i think oh my goodness maybe that's what i've had for years and i haven't realized and yeah. since actually talking about it with my friends my friends have now come out and said actually i've had ibs for a few years now and i've never really talked to anyone about it's it only, and even the official stats are somewhere between five and twenty yeah. percent that's way beyond the margin of error i mean that's that's anywhere yeah. from a small percentage of the population to one-fifth of the population may have it and nobody knows we can't pin it down i mean that's quite extraordinary i can't think of any other condition where there's that kind of margin of error. It is really, really scary. And it's, you know, like what you were saying, mm. you, you, you can go to your doctor and you can say all these things and they, they aren't wanting to, first of all, go, oh, you have IBS. They almost want to rule things out, which is great. And, and you know, it could, it could just be a food poisoning or it could just be a case of something else. But it's very difficult to, to just say, right, this is exactly what you have. And it is scary because you could be living with something that you don't realise. You, you're managing it quite well at the moment Zoe. I'm very yeah. I, I'm I mean I cannot tell you how relieved I am because after living with this for over a decade and trying various products on the market I was asked recently to try Alpharex and I thought okay well I'll give it a go and I suppose at first you try something and you're a little bit skeptical you think you know, I'm almost used to living with this. It's sort of the nightmare as part of my life. And I have been trying it now for three months. And the first month, it sort of lines your gut. And, um, and then all of a sudden, I've just been symptom free, which is unbelievable for me because I've been symptom free now for months, wow. which has never, ever happened. When I used to get my flare ups, it would happen every couple of months. And I used to have, you know, at least half a dozen a year. And I've been symptom free for months. My bloating has gone down. Um, I haven't had I used to be careful with food. I used to think, you know, oh, maybe if I ate this way, it would help some of my symptoms and it would relieve them. It wouldn't make them go away. But I literally can eat whatever I want. And, and having just got married and been on my honeymoon... I don't know anyone moon, with IBS uh, who can say that. Well, this is the yeah. thing. And, and actually, it is quite remarkable. And thank you for emphasising that because it is really true that a lot of sufferers of IBS have to rule out certain things and they have to be careful. And they know that if they eat certain foods, they are trigger foods. And for me, for the first time ever, I can literally eat whatever I I want and it will not trigger any of my symptoms at the minute I'm completely symptom free and it's just a miracle and I just can't believe that this product has worked so well for me and to the friends that I've mentioned there that have come out and said actually I'm suffering from IBS they are now wanting to try this product as well and I mean I just hope that it works as well for them as it does for me because when I was first told about Alpharex I'd never heard of it before and I just wanted to give it a go and it has worked for me and I actually sitting here can't believe it because I think of all the times where I literally was in so much pain and this has just 
really worked for me and relieved everything. Zoe, as a television presenter, you. you'll know what this We're means. We're being wrapped. So. I've just, just been told you're three minutes over that. Hotel, so it's, uh, it's a lovely to meet you. And I'm, I'm Pleasure glad to meet you, Zoe.